Today, I'm gonna show you all PF2E Doraco UI. This is a UI overhaul for the Pathfinder 2nd Edition system in Foundry VTT. In this video, I'm gonna show you the differences between not having the UI and then having the UI turned on, as well as some different variations. Stick around for a full overview. I'll also be showing you the little odds and ends and settings that change the way you play in Foundry VTT. More on that later. Also, stick around till the end for the coolest part of Doraco UI, or I guess you could just check the timestamps, huh? Although disclaimer, I won't be doing a thorough settings overview, just what I think is important. Still, there's a lot to cover, so like and subscribe if you like this sort of content, and let's get started with PF2E Doraco UI. Doraka UI has a lot of theme settings from the interface to the sheets to the chat message to the chat message colors So let me go ahead and show you what each theme looks like. There's a lot of permutations with each theme So I'm not gonna show you each one, but I'll show you the most I can also before I forget I recommend you get the force client settings module so that some of these themes can be soft locked to your players so that they don't have to set the settings up themselves. All right, starting off, this one is the glass theme with the sheet things being core rulebook light and the chat message all being core rulebook light as well. So continue with the glass theme. We're gonna change the sheet and chat message themes to all be dark core rulebook which looks like this. This is a true dark mode. At this point, I'm also gonna show you the sheet theme color change. You can change it to be the player's color, which currently I'm pink, so the theme's gonna turn to pink. We can do red, we can do green, we can do black, black on black. We can do black on white, which actually looks pretty cool if you are using light mode. Do brown. Let's try the next theme, Foundry 2. Wait. There's a Foundry 1, where's my Foundry 3? Okay, this looks like dark mode as well with uh, the chat being a bit ew. Brother, uh. Maybe it's my player color? Let me change that. Changing the player color does change the chat theme, which sort of up to you. I would put something different here. Let's move on to Baldur's Gate 3. This is the brown theme. And this is the blue theme. And since this song is a banger, I'm gonna keep it for the rest of the D&D related themes. Let's check out D&D Light and D&D Dark. This is D&D Light. And this is D&D Dark with the interface theme still being Baldur's Gate 3 and it looks way better. Oh my God. All right, last two. This one's Discord Light and it's slightly less egregious than D&D Light. And then this is Discord Dark, which I'll be honest, doesn't look half bad if you aren't sick of Discord in your other screen already. I'm also gonna mix and match a couple of themes just to see which ones look the best, although I'm not gonna do all permutations. For example, the interface theme is opaque. The sheet themes are Foundry 2. And what I do like about this is that the opposition is dark. Well, the alliance is white, which means that you can differentiate between party members and the GM just by changing the themes like that. Here's another quick permutation with Baldur's Gate 3 theme on the UI and then the core rulebook dark for the sheet theme. So everything's dark and the chat messages are light Discord and Dark Discord for both the Opposition and the Alliance. And then the Duraco UI theme I personally use in my games. Super simple. We've got Foundry 2 for the interface theme. Core Rulebook Dark for the sheet theme. Default sheet theme color. And then the chat theme is all white because I prefer having the contrast. All right, we're done with the themes. Just a final couple of touches. Okay, and look, there's a do-it-yourself theme, but uh... That scares me and I'm not gonna touch that, okay? There's a roundedness. You can make it rounder if you wish. I haven't messed with it. And that's Duraka UI in a nutshell. All right, this is the part where I'd put a sponsor if I had one. I'm gonna plug someone anyway, cause I like their stuff. A couple of Black Fridays ago, I bought some premium dice from the Rollsmith. Let's check them out real quick. Did I just say premium dice? Yes, I did. You can be a dice hoarder online as well. We've got some cool dice that usually you don't see in Foundry VTT. Premium 
Sure, they cost a couple of bucks, but whatever. I think it's worth it. So check them out at The Rollsmith. And no, The Rollsmith did not sponsor this video. But you might as well check them out anyway in the link in the description below. Why would I hurt my retention with a not sponsor? Because I think premium dice are cool. All right, let's check out the next part of Doraka UI, the small little settings that make a big difference. So, Doraka UI requires another module called Doraka UX. Doraka UX has this bunch of small settings. We're gonna go through them one by one and see what they do. Although, like I mentioned at the start of this video, I'm not gonna go through everything. Chat avatars, prefer actor image. Watch the actor image here. If you do token image, it'll change it to that. And disabled is completely gone. Hide avatars when the token is hidden. We'll hide them if you type when the token's hidden. You can change the size. That looks better. There's a whole setting section for hiding stuff. So let's hide some stuff. We can hide the card tabs up here, which to be honest, I don't usually use. So might as well. Oh, it's gone. We can hide the chat control icon. Let me disable that and see what it hides. Oh yeah. What's the point of this? Let's rehide that. Hide the Foundry logo. But then how do I know that I'm using Foundry all the time? Oh well. There's a couple of collapse stuff by default that whenever you refresh, it'll collapse this or this whenever you start foundry uh, i think this is needed for Duraco ui team so you just have this selected enable chat merge let's try this out oh seems to merge them all into one message that's cool i guess oh this one's important actually this one's selected by default when you start Duraco. this is sort of what it looks without and yeah this looks way better good job Duraco. enable compact ui let's try this oh that's that's really compact. Interesting. Very interesting. Did I fail to mention everything's changing in Foundry version 13? The UI is having a overhaul and so is Duraco more likely than not. So check out this video right here to see what's changing in Foundry version 13. All right, now as promised earlier, it's time for the coolest part of this video. What I use Duraco UI mainly for, also the UI stuff as well, but like this is super cool. So without the setting, this is what your effects panel looks like on this giant worm. Look at them all stacking up nicely on this right side. Oh boy, this worm's kind of screwed, huh? It's got a lot of effects, but watch when I change this setting. Now we got a cave worm. Now every time I put an effect on this cave worm, it's gonna go around like a circle. Doesn't that look cool? I think it looks super flipping neat. Sometimes when we get a full circle of status effects on player characters, I put it on my Discord, which you could probably join in the link below if you wanted to chat more about Pathfinder or other modules. And that's Doraka UI in a nutshell. I probably missed a thing or two. I know I missed a thing or two. So let me know in the comments below what you think the coolest part of Doraka UI is. And as always, like and subscribe if you like this sort of content and watch this video right here. It's super amazing, I promise. Bye.